YouTube? Hey, welcome to part one of the On3 Turbo install. I'm completely stoked because it is finally time. Um, I spent some time yesterday in the car just driving because it's pretty outside. And um, I know it's going to be down for a little bit. So took it out. Me and my son took it out all day. Kind of spent the Saturday in it. And um, yeah, so we're gonna get right to the first part of installing this ON3 Turbo, and that is the fuel injectors and the orbit location and just strip down. So we probably won't get to the hot side. In this episode, this is all gonna cover the uh, fuel injection install. We're gonna be replacing the injectors with the DECA Siemens um, 60 pound. So first thing we're gonna do is release the fuel pressure in the system and uh, get the intake off, we'll get that buttoned up and then get the car up in the air and um, start getting the exhaust ripped off the car but um, that will probably be for the next episode. So this one we're going to take, we're going to do the 90 degree oil relocation um, but for that I do want to get the exhaust off kind of out of the way so we may just do some really just tear down so yeah! Stay tuned. If you are new to force induction, turbochargers or superchargers, you know that we are going to be increasing a lot more air into that motor than the little atmosphere out here can be sucked into the engine. So since we're forcing air into the engine, we have to force that much fuel in it to make sure the air fuel mixture is good and rich of fuel. So to do that, that's why we are increasing our injector size from the stock 30-ish or that I had on the car, not stock, um, up to the 60 pounds that we're putting in. On top of that, you want to make sure you also have enough fuel flow from your fuel tank to get to the injectors to feed all that extra fuel into the engine. So I'm running already an Aeromotive uh, 340 liters per hour uh, stealth in-tank pump. We did that a year or two years ago in preparation um, for the turbo. Um, the stock motor ran fine with that big pump. It was obviously just recirculating a lot more fuel than needed, but knowing later that we'll be putting forced induction to the car, it just made sense to go ahead and do it then um, and get ready for it. So again, that's another thing that I have prepared for way before getting this turbo um, and putting it onto the car, which is really cool. So again, we're increasing the injector size because we are increasing the air, a lot more air, and on top of that, you've got boost pressures pushing up against the cylinder, which is pushing up against the head of the injector. So you need to be able to have a large enough injector and large enough fuel supply from your pump to overcome the boost pressures in the engine to push fuel for fire. Also, another component to consider for your fuel system upgrades for any kind of force induction is your fuel pressure regulator right here on your fuel rails. I am already running a Kerbin fuel pressure regulator, which is boost reference, which means for every pound of boost that this port sees into your regulator increases one pound to your fuel rails and your fuel system. So what that means is as boost is increasing the motor, the fuel pressure is increasing your fuel rails, which helps make sure that you're getting fuel into the motor while it's getting pumped full of air. So something to consider. Um, that's why I'm not going over this on this video because I already have it. But if you're new to this and if you are planning to put a turbo on your car in the future, when you do look at maybe replacing your fuel pressure rating, go ahead and get one that is boost reference. Again, it may be crappy looking, but it works great. It's a Kerbin fuel pressure regulator and it's gonna work just fine. Okay, to relieve the fuel pressure in the car, um, there's many ways to go about doing this. The way I like to do it is to just disconnect the fuel pump plug right here. Just like that. Okay, and we'll start the car until it dies. That'll relieve the fuel pressure. You can also do it from the fuel rails. You can pull the relay to the fuel pump. Like I said, many ways to do this, but this will kill it pretty quick. It will even start. Fuel pressure should be relieved. Okay, now that the fuel pressure is relieved, I did take the time to go ahead and remove the hood. It's going to be off the car for a little bit. Just give me more room. It's totally worth it. You're not working around your your hood prop and you're not having to uh, work around the angle of the hood here. And it also gives you more light. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all the spark plug boots and remove the wires out of the way. I removed the plug wires really just to make more room for me to work. You're going to have to remove them anyway to get to the spark plugs, but get them out of the way. They're going to be in the way whenever you try to change the injectors out. 
Next, I do have to go ahead and remove the mass airflow sensor in and the intake tube because it's no longer be needed as I'm using the Mega Squirt ECU anyways. Go ahead and unplug the IAC, the TPS, and all the crankcase, uh, oil crankcase vent tube and all the vacuum lines. Be gentle with the vacuum lines though because these are old and brittle. Note that your vacuum intake does have vacuum lines coming out of it, so go ahead and just kind of pull those off gently. Make sure you release everything connected to your intake before you lift it off. You gonna help? You gonna help? Yeah. Okay. You wanna see what we're doing? Yes, I do. All right, check it out. I'm pulling out the intake here. See this right here, Connor? Come here, boy. This big metal thing right here is the intake. I have to pull this off so we can replace our fuel injectors. Fuel injectors are little squirters, there's eight of them. Each one squirts into a cylinder and makes fired explosions. Ooh. Okay? Okay, I find it easier just to remove the throttle bracket itself than actually removing the throttle cable from the bracket, which you can do on this bolt here. Uh, that would leave it in place. But since I've still got the cruise control cable, which I really need to remove, I'm just gonna remove the whole bracket here. Okay, remember to always put your bolts back so you don't lose them or back and tag them. All right, now we're gonna cover up the syntate, make sure nothing gets in it. Okay, so I got everything sealed up here. Now we just gotta simply unplug each injector. Okay, get yourself a 516 here. This is just unbolting the fuel rail. There's four of them, so they have one here, there, here, and there. This just attaches your fuel rail up to your intake. Okay, once the fuel rail is unmounted, everything should just pop right up. There you go. Make sure you get a rag handy, because it's probably gonna want to drip some fuel out of here, guys. Now make sure when you take these off, if you see what I just did, the O-ring came off inside of it. So make sure you go back and get that out with a pick. Okay, to retrieve the O-ring that you've lost into your fuel rail, just get yourself a pick. These are really handy. Pry it out just like that. Okay, we're gonna keep these O-rings on, keep them together so that way I can sell these to somebody else that might need them. As far as I know, these are working just great in the car and they're fine. All right, now to install the new DECA 60 pounds. Let me get all these guys out. Okay, before we put the injectors in, I'm gonna take kind of a methodical approach here. We're gonna put some of this dielectric grease on it. This is a silicon-based grease, which is what you want for fuel injectors. We're just gonna put a little bit around the O-ring, one at a time. Help it slip through. And we'll just do these one at a time, man. Just like that, pops right in. We're just gonna go down the row, do each one at a time. Okay, once you got one side done, I'm gonna go ahead and seat these into the uh, intake. Just like that. Okay, we'll do the other side and screw it down tight. Be done. Okay, just like that, the 60 pound injectors are installed. Guys, that didn't take me any time at all. That was super easy. So we got the injectors on. We can cross something off our list. All right, 60 pound injectors. Check. 
Cool. So we'll do the oil 90 degree relocation. Do something with a PC, uh, PCV valve and uh, go ahead and hook up the oil line to the turbo, which we could probably go ahead and do now. We got plenty of room for it. Okay, you don't have to put the intake back on. I'm going to go ahead and get the car up in the air and go ahead and drain some of the oil, probably drain some of the coolant so we can start getting prepared to put in the oil relocation 90 degree elbow from Ford Racing. We'll get that guy installed and then we'll go ahead and put the oil feed line into the side of the block to get ready for the turbo line. It is necessary to move the oil filter out of the way or the on three turbo driver side header will hit your stock oil filter if you're using the stock size one. You can remedy this by using a short and stubby oil filter relocation kit or in my case use a Ford Racing 90 degree elbow that moves the filter down and away from the turbo. So that is why we have to use this kit to make room for the driver's side header. Okay, got the car nice high up in the air. So I got plenty of room down here to work. It's gonna be up here for a little bit while I get the turbo stuff installed. So I've got it up right now. I'm gonna go ahead and drain some oil out so we can get to unscrew the oil filter and start putting on this nine degree elbow. So I'm gonna drain all of it out. We're gonna drain enough of it out just so we can not get oil everywhere. Okay guys, this kit is super, super self-explanatory. There's nothing to it. This is simply gonna bolt onto the engine block side. This is gonna go on exactly where your oil filter went. So what we'll do, is we'll place the O-ring right inside of here. Okay, just like that. Okay, and we'll put a little bit of oil on it just like you would normally on a filter. And on the back side, this little tiny guy will go into there. This is what screws into your block. This is where your oil filter normally would go. It screws on like that. So this will go right into the side of the block. And then we'll put the oil filter on this threaded part right here. Yeah, super easy. Okay, I know it's hard to see this in this angle, but before we go ahead and put the oil filter relocation on here, now is a good time to go ahead and take care of the feed line for the oil, uh, for the turbo, which is right here. So we're going to go ahead and remove the sitting unit here. This goes to my aftermarket gauge. So I need to hook the wire on the top and go ahead and screw this out. And then we'll get ready to thread in the piece that on three gave me for the oil feed line. I decided since this is out and out of the way, now is a good time to go ahead and tackle the oil feed line. This is one of the kit, uh, one of the pieces, uh, the packages that came with the on three turbo kit. This is going to be our oil feed line, our drain. Uh, and then the pieces are going. So this is everything you need for the oil, uh, the oil feeds of the turbo. So what we need here is this block and maybe this adapter. Let's just see what we got here. Okay, so we have our oil feed tube here, which is cool. Of course, we have the package here that's got the oil drain. Um, drain line, this drill, actually this is meant to thread into the side of the tap you're supposed to make in the side of the oil pan. I'm not doing that. Um, I've already welded in a bung with this fitting on it, so all I have to do is screw it in, which is super awesome. It's going to save me a bunch of time. I did that ahead of time, so we'll do that. Here's the oil feed, and what we're after is this guy right here. This is going to screw into the existing location, hopefully give us room here for the oil center unit to my gauge, and then on the top here this will give us a feed um, for this line here. Yep, so this is going to be for the braided line here. We're going to get this part ready. It'll screw in just like this on one end. This will screw into probably the top port. Like that. And then coming out the back here, we'll hopefully be able to put our sitting unit without bumping into anything. So yeah, let's give this a shot. Make sure I put some Teflon tape on here and we'll wrap it up. Okay, so coming down to the motor, there is our stock block right there for your oil feed. This guy right here, I think what we're going to do is put it straight up and down like that. The top feed line will go straight to the um, turbo and then out the bottom here, out the side, is going to be our uh, fuel pressure sending unit to the autometer gauge. So that's the way it'll go. Let's go ahead and wrap it up with Teflon tape. Put it in. 
Okay, and just to reiterate, this is going to go in the block. This will screw in right here. So put some more Teflon tape on this. Should be good to go. Okay, guys, it's in. Here's what I've come up with. I've gotten the oil filter pretty much just straight um, 90 degrees down from the block here. So and I've actually relocated the feed line to the side here um, just because I think that maybe the sticking out could cause interference with the uh, turbo downpipe. Um, the oil sending unit if I put it here. So I went ahead and decided to put the oil sending unit back on the top port and the feed lines are now going to go out uh, the bottom here. So again, I don't know how this is all going to play out really until we get the uh, until we get the turbo header on the manifold on this side because the down pipe's going to go straight down here. Now I can tell you right now I've got way too much stuff in, <laughs> in the way here. Um, we've got the battery cables that are going to the uh, starter. Uh, I've got a large ground cable here. So as you can see, I've got a lot, if not just way too much damn stuff in the way already as is. It's kind of comical because I am putting on a turbo kit and you think about clearance and how small and tight and everything is um, with the piping and tubing. And here I am fighting with the oil filter relocation. So that's how it is though, man. It's just how it's going to be this whole process. but. I try to put the oil filter this way up towards the radiator, which I've seen a lot of guys have it rotated like this and oil filters going out this way. I didn't, couldn't do that simply because oh, of all the lines in the way. First, you can see here, but I've got my cables, uh, the power string line is in the way, and most of all, it hit the bottom of the lower radiator hose. I couldn't even get the filter up in there um, to screw it up because it doesn't go up all the way if I can get it up Here right below the power steering pump. It would work just fine, but it won't rotate that high up because your Your oil pressure block comes out and actually blocks the uh, The Ford racing elbow from spinning all the way because it hits that block So this is what I came up with it actually hugs the block believe it or not that does not hit the oil pan it is right next to it, and it's nice and tucked up right up against the uh, uh, right up against the oil pan. So the oil filter is there. I think we're just going to have to play it by ear and see how it goes. And if I have to re relocate it or move it, we probably will. Um, so hopefully that allows us enough clearance for the turbo. Again, you don't have to use this 90 degree filter from Ford Racing. On3 does make a kit, however they've just been known to leak like crazy um, and it's a relocation kit so you actually have lines coming out and you can put it either here, you know, somewhere on the front, up on the inner fender well, somewhere out of the way. So you could do that as well. I would opted to use this and um, it'll make oil changes easy when the car is lifted up because it's up straight up and down. You can just unscrew it, drop it, put it back in. So hoping this spot sticks, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my oil sending unit fits right here and doesn't hit the power steering pump which it looks like it's going to be awfully close and if that's okay we'll go ahead and leave the feed line run the feed line cable and get it looped around here to get ready for the turbo so yay let's see if that fits alright guys so check it out this is how everything ended up being um, for now this is how it's going to be I've gone ahead and put the oil uh, 90 degree elbow facing down hopefully that'll give me enough room uh, for the uh, turbo manifold on the driver's side we got the oil feed line in place i went ahead and put it down on the bottom side that gives me a little bit more room for the oil center unit which is now right up here on top so that's kind of cool i got ahead went ahead and plugged it back in i got the feed line going underneath the compressor and up along here just kind of waiting for the turbo to go in there so there's no getting around it. I don't know if that setup's going to work just yet until I get the exhaust off and we get the turbo manifolds installed. Because I got a feeling there's going to be a lot of stuff in the way. And there's a good chance that even with the oil filter going down like this instead of up a 90 degree out like this, it may not work. We'll have to see. Um, so I'm kind of taking this one piece at a time. So that's pretty cool. We have one more thing to do before we can kind of finish up the um, oil and the gas part of the series here the episode let me show you this it's the oil drain line so on three we'll send you this guy right here 
So this is your oil drain plug. And this will actually tap in to the bottom of your turbo. So this taps into the bottom of the turbo. This will screw in and then it will have a hose attached from this spot here. And this part will go into your oil pan for the drain back. Um, mine has already got it. Let me show you here what I've got. Okay, you can see right there on the side of the block, I've one head and welted in a return bung with the same size thread that I know we're going to be needing for this on three turbo kit. So all I have to do is unscrew that, put that one in, and the drain will be ready to go. So, yeah, yeah. It's kind of cool I went ahead and did that. Otherwise, if you didn't do that, and most of you probably didn't, um, you're going to have to punch a hole into the oil pan and drill and tap it. I did not like the idea of punching a hole in the oil pan with everything installed and then drilling and tapping. I'm sure it works fine. Um, I just It just freaks me out. You know, you got to have the exact spot in the oil pan so you don't make sure you punch through and hit your rod or your crank um, or anything like that. So anyways, I did that before um, a long time ago knowing that in the future I'll be putting a turbo kit on the car. So all we have to do now is unscrew the plug, screw this in. And there is our return, just waiting for the turbo. So that completes this section of the On3 Turbo install. We have installed the 90 degree oil filter relocation elbow, and we've added the feed line, we've added the drain line, and we've installed the 60 pound deck injector. So we can now cross off the oil 90 degree relocation. We can cross off the oil line feed and uh, we will definitely do something about the PCV valve. I got an idea what to do with that and I just haven't ordered the parts yet, but that's something we have to take care of because you can't pressurize the block guys with your stock PCV valve. It's gotta be handled. So that completes that. I do wanna give a really awesome shout out to the North Texas Fox and Body Club. James, Justin, Doug, um, gosh, Jeremy. Um, there's so many people on there that have helped me out. Tom, don't want to forget you, buddy. Um, you guys are, are you have no idea um, how much help you are. I know for a fact that I couldn't do this or I wouldn't have the confidence to do this without such an awesome group of dudes that are willing to help me out. Um, I've been chatting with a lot of these guys uh, throughout this stuff and um, throughout this install. So um, thank you so much. You know who you are. And um, guys, yeah, man, stay tuned. So we have the hot side coming next. That's coming very, very soon. It is about to really start ramping up. This was kind of a boring install, but man, we're gonna be installing the entire hot side. We're gonna mock it up, make sure everything fits, get everything fitting perfectly and take it back off so that we either get ceramic coated or get a wrap on it so we can do some heat management on it. So once the hot side is on, then we will move on to the cold side piping, the intercooler, and start getting the bumper to fit and everything else that's along with it. So please stay tuned. We have so much more, so much more coming. Um, so the next episode will be exclusively for um, the hot side, and there's a whole bunch of stuff to do in that. So check it out. Follow me on Instagram. You guys will get updates and notifications and all the cool stuff I'm doing on this car, stuck in my garage in cold weather. You can be here with me, hang out with me in my garage. Um, and you know, subscribe, that helps me out just a little bit. It's not like I'm getting rich off this by any means, but it helps me out and it lets you know when I've got new episodes coming out. So thank you for watching. We'll see you on episode two.